Now we're going to take a look at creating the visual display for the index.html example. And that looks like this. You can see there's a header, fetching data with Ajax, a button, display message, and as you've already seen, a div element with the text. The fetch data will go here in it. Now note that I'm running this locally. I mean, you need to run this on a web server. I'm running this locally on the information internet information server that comes built into Windows and if you want to develop it this way, develop this example this way, you need to use the C colon backslash inet pub directory. You go into that directory and you find a subdirectory called www root. Then you can create subfolders of the www root directory. I've created a, a folder named VTC Ajax, then I put index.html in it, and so that's why you end up with this URL, HTTP localhost, VTC Ajax, index.html. That's just to run this example locally, and of course you're going to need a web server of some kind. You can develop your Ajax applications locally using a setup just like this one where you use the a subfolder of the www root folder but of course in the, uh, ultimately you're going to need a web server in which to host your Ajax applications this is just for development so let's take a look at how this how this display is produced and as you know when the user clicks the display message button behind the scenes Ajax fetches the the new text and displays it let's start getting into this a little bit more here is the body element, HTML element of the index.html page and here you have the header fetching data with Ajax and then the, the form element, the HTML form element contains the button you see with the, this, with the caption display message that's assigned to the value attribute of the button, input type equals button and the most important part is the on click event attribute on click equals when the user clicks the button we call a JavaScript function we're going to call get data we're going to create that function and pass it to items the name of the file to fetch on the server and the name of the element to display the fetched text in now in this case that fetched text should be displayed in a div element named target div which is also on the web page so here's how that works you have a div element ID equals target div that's the same ID that we're passing to this get data function that we're going to create and here is where the original text the fetched data will go here appears so the idea is when the user clicks the button the on click attribute tells the tells the web page to call the get data function and tells the function to look for the tells will tell Ajax to look for the data.txt file on the server and to take the text from data.txt and display it in the target div element. So here is what the function get data looks like. You've already seen this JavaScript which created the XML HTTP request object we're going to need. Here is the function get data and as you see here it's going to, it's going to take a, a parameter called data source and this is going to be set to data.txt, the file we're going to be looking for on the server. Data.txt just contains the text. This text was fetched using Ajax. That's a very simple first example and the get data function will fetch that file and display the results in the div element that's passed whose ID is passed to the function as the second parameter so that's how the display is created in this first example and how the button is connected to a JavaScript function that will fetch data from data.txt and display that downloaded data in the target div element.